Okay, so during development, the spinal cord is a, is a segmented structure and it, it is paired with somites, which are developmental structures from which muscle and bone are going to, to develop. And in the, uh, in the fetus, in the, in, in the embryo, what you have is a spinal cord that is very well matched in length to the vertebral column and also, in fact, to the uh, location of the somites. So there will be a somite here and a somite here, et cetera. And so what happens is that the segments send their roots out to uh, exit from, the, um, and then the nerves out uh, from the vertebral column. And when they leave, they're going out straight, straight out. Then what happens is that the spinal cord grows, but not very much, and the vertebral col column grows a lot. But everybody still has their place where they have to exit from. So now this segment here has to travel a little bit to get to where it's going to exit from. And this segment has to travel a little bit more, and this one even more, and so on. And so what you have is that the spinal cord is going to end here in the adult. And then beyond that, there's going to be all of these roots that are going to be collected within the dura of, this, of the vertebral column before the roots have, have emerged as spinal nerves. Now, in, in, a, in a, an adult, the uh, spinal cord ends right about here, OK? Oh, ha. <laughs> In an adult, the spinal cord ends just below the, the rib cage, so uh, above the small of the back. Uh, and beyond that is, is this collection of roots. And this root, this collection, looks like a horse's tail. And the Latin, I believe, for that is, uh, well, I, I know that the word is cardoquina. I believe it's Latin. And this is called the cardoquina. All right, so let's go over to, to the slides to see what that how that looks. Here is a picture. This is the dura. It's, it's been cut open. Um, and you're looking down, and you can see a little bit of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is going to end right there. That's the conus medullaris. Here, this white bit coming down here is the phylum terminale, that collection of pia. Um, and here are all these roots. They're going down to find their exit point. They're going down to find their exit point. OK. So now, let's say that you suspect a person has an infection in the central nervous system. You want to gain access to the, to the fluid of the central nervous system. Well, I don't think we want to drain a hole in the, brain, in the cranium. Um, and we certainly don't want to risk injuring the spinal cord. So what we do is that we go in into this area here, the cardioquina. So what's in the cardioquina? These roots plus CSF. It's actually a, a cistern. It's a place where CSF collects. It's called the lumbar cistern. And so this area right here, which is the, um, uh, it, it, with the lumbar cistern, this is where we're going to, a, a physician will put a needle in and go right through the dura, sample the, the fluid, and, and get out. OK, and that will enable you to, to uh, sample what's in there to, to, to uh, diagnose, for example, various forms of uh, encephalitis or meningitis. But you can also use it to, to do a few other things. You could use it to administer drugs directly into the central nervous system. Um, and there's one more thing that you can do, which is to, to measure the pressure of, uh, uh, in, this, in, the, uh, in the dural envelope. Now, pressure is, is a sensitive thing. And when you're, a lumbar puncture is a, is a relatively safe, minimally invasive procedure, but one does have to be concerned about pressure. Why? Because think about if, if, uh, if you provide a low pressure sink, this would, be a, this would pull the brain out. 
And so this is a very this is the danger. So a lumbar puncture is is minimally invasive, relatively safe, but can go terribly wrong. So it must be done in a in a an appropriate setting. The final thing about the cauda is that what are most of these roots carrying? They're carrying information from the lumbar and sacral uh, segments. And so think about if a person lands really hard on their backside and actually damages these roots. That produces something called the cauda equina syndrome. And the cauda equina syndrome is going to be marked immediately by um, a weakness in the legs. Uh, uh, and, and perhaps some sensory disturbances, but um, weakness in the legs. The thing that you as a future physician must worry about is whether the autonomics are involved and whether there is an, the ability to uh, void urine. So if you, you can imagine that the sacral outflow, remember the sacral autonomic outflow goes to the colon, the um, genitalia, and to the bladder. Now, if there's if there's a problem with one of those three things, which one are you going to see first, which is going to be the most immediate and most obvious problem, is, a, is an inability to void urine, a problem with the bladder. And if that occurs, this is, this is a medical emergency. One has to, one has to solve that problem because um, uh, urinary retention without ever being able to void is a, a potentially lethal condition. In the next video, we're going to tackle the autonomic neurons in some detail. And here we have um, some, some fun surprises in store. <laughs>